Hey, this is Bill from Caliber Percussion, and I'm standing next to this comically large 90-inch bass drum that we are almost finished with for Ottawa University in Kansas. As I've been telling people about this, the two questions I get most frequently are, uh, where are you going to get heads for that, and how are you going to cut bearing edges for that? Uh, the heads question is simple. Uh, Remo will do any, any custom size heads you want, up to 108 inches. Um, at only 90 inches, this one uh, seems like uh, not that big, right? Um, but uh, yeah, Remo will do any, any size head you need. Um, they're pretty expensive, but uh, they can do it, and that's awesome. Um, the second question of how are we going to cut bearing edges, that is a much more complicated thing, and it took us a little while to figure this out. Uh, so I'll show you in just a second, but on the inside of this shell, there are four re-rings. Um, there's one here, 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 and then here. Uh, the distance between the top re-ring and the bearing edge is one inch, but when we when we built the shell, we made these extend beyond that so we'd be able to cut them down to get it accurate. So uh, in order to get this flat to prep for bearing edge cutting, uh, it was sort of a multi-step process. So the first thing we did was use this trim router and ran it sideways against, against that bearing edge to get it sort of in the ballpark. And then mostly just using this block plane. This is uh, a really nice little um, bench dog block plane that we got from Rockler, which if you're looking for a pretty kick-ass plane that is not wildly expensive, these are pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's a really useful tool as long as you keep it super, 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 super sharp. Really useful tool in just, in just lev leveling out problem spots. Um, and then just very carefully went around with um, with combo squares to just make sure that it was as consistent one inch from the, the edge to the rear ring as we could possibly get it. And um, I, I can't say that it's it's dead flat, but I mean, we're really, really, I mean, within a millimeter close all the way around. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, so now that the edge is prepped, uh, doing the bearing edge required a little bit of modification to our trim router. So uh, I'm, I'm usually a proponent of the simplest situation being the, the, the simplest solution being the best when it comes to creating jigs or fixtures because uh, it's kind of fun to engineer really complicated uh, contraptions to do things. But honestly, I found that when I'm, when I'm doing these kinds of things, A, uh, something that I can build quickly so that I can keep progressing with the project is great, but also the more complicated things I make, the more things there are to potentially fail and, and break. And um, so yeah, this is just a, a very, very simple solution to the problem. Took the foot off this trim router and replaced it with just a, a piece of pine that's bolted, uh, that's bolted to this uh, casting. Uh, the pine is exactly the same distance from the, the top re-ring to the prepped edge of the shell, which is well, it's an inch and a sixty-fourth, but um, but uh, anyway, so this is just going to ride right here, and uh, I'm going to go around, and then to do the other side, there probably will not be enough clearance between. I haven't measured yet, but there probably won't be enough clearance using. So we're doing a forty-five degree chamfer on the inside, and a quarter-inch radius roundover on the outside. So there, there probably won't be enough clearance with this. Uh, so I'm going to wind up making a new wooden piece to ride on the on the rear ring. But again, using these these super super simple solutions means it's it's really easy for me to just make this part. It, it fits. It's exact. And then when I need another one, I can just cut a new one of these uh, to fit the other side of the cut. And it's just a quick easy solution to that problem. So let me show you how it works. Okay, we're now inside the bass drum shell. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but uh, speaking in here is weird because it's extremely resonant. Uh, but this is what the inside of the shell looks like. What you are looking at is Philippine mahogany. Uh, this shell is um, nine plies. So four of those plies are Philippine mahogany, two are birch, and the exterior three plies are okumi. Uh, and the rear rings, as you can see, are just made of, of many laminations of plywood. So looking at where our router setup is. So again, this is just a trim router and you can see how it's riding uh, on the re-ring. And um, this is how we're gonna cut this edge. So here we go, wish me luck.
as you can see, that worked, uh, that worked pretty well. So we have, this is Philippine mahogany, birch, two plies of Philippine mahogany, birch, uh, more mahogany than the, the three plies of okumi on the end. So we're going right up to this, this ply of birch. We're going to put the apex of the edge right there. Um, to be quite honest, on a drum this big, <laughs> I'm not really sure how much this matters, but uh, this is what we're going to do. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that worked. All right, thanks for watching. Um, as we uh, as we continue to finish this thing off and put it together, I'm going to try and do a few more videos like this, answering some of the most common questions that people have asked. Uh, also, we're just really excited about this thing. It's a huge drum. This is awesome. So uh, it's going to be really exciting to put this thing together and, and finally get to hear what it sounds like. So um, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, we'll have more videos about that. Thanks.